Atheism is a belief that anything outside of rational, objective reality is not only not real, but idiotic and a nuisance to any conception of truth. That's problematic. So when I grew up with a father like that, dad was God to me. Like any kids is, dad equals God. Your dad is the window to which you perceive the world. And if that window is God isn't real and all spirituality is stupid, then you end up internalizing that. So I internalize the belief that God isn't real. Not only is God not real, but if God is real, he's a lunatic and a psychopath and basically built my brain perceiving the world that way. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of the New Age Sage podcast. I'm doing doing a solo episode today in the new studio uh, because I have a message that is very big on my heart and I believe it will help many on their journey. And this message is basically my journey from atheism to New Age spirituality to mystical Christianity or following Jesus. Um, why I believe this topic is important, I think most people reside in one of these three categories and they stick to that box, right? Either someone is super atheistic and denies any possibility of any deity out there, or they are very new age spiritual and obsessed with manifestation and chakras and all these, you know, stereotypically new age, you know, some of it bullshit, some of it truth. Uh, and they're stuck in that box and they reject all forms of atheism, and they re reject all forms of uh, Christianity. And then the last one is Christianity or religion. People are either in the box of atheism, spirituality, or deep religion, orthodoxy, dogma, Christianity. Um, before I you know, we get going here, and many people can come here being like, oh, this guy's vouching for Christianity and how it's the way. I don't believe Christianity is the way at all. I think Christianity is a scam um, because the Bible has been mistranslated over and over again and the Apostle Paul inverted Jesus' teachings from the truth. Uh, if you want more information about that, look at my my one of my, my best friend Aaron Abke's work. He knows a lot more about that than me, but he teaches me about it and I believe it and I know it. But I do believe that Jesus is real. The energy of Jesus is very real and the archetype of Jesus is the most useful ar archetype to follow in the collective consciousness. I will conclude my episode why I believe that and how that's the case and how to recommend one to use that, but also how it's very diff different from Christianity. So that's my intention with this episode, for you to see the traps of atheism, or if you want to be atheist, there's some advantages to that too, or, you know, the the traps of New Age spirituality and the, tra and the traps of Christianity, and why I choose at this moment to abandon atheism, to abandon many spiritual ideologies, and re reside in my devotion to Jesus. Um, and I'll expand on why that is, but I think it's worth listening to because you'll most importantly realize how atheism is destructive to your consciousness, to your development, how New Age spiritual practices actually enhance your ego and your nar narcissistic tendencies. So, that's why I'm doing this episode, and I hope you find clarity in this and find ways of being that are more conducive to your reality you want to create for yourself. So, and I'll be checking my iPad as time goes on because I just, this is very important to me and there's different, you know, points I want to make sure not to miss in this episode. So if you see me look at my iPad, it's because I'm, I'm making sure I have everything, everything locked in. So let's begin with your boy's life as an atheist. Um... And like any atheist, I think it's that begins in, in childhood. And I want to contextualize my childhood to show you guys why that was the case. So my mom was became very spiritual before she passed away uh, two years ago. and But until then, she was kind of questioning her spirituality and didn't help that my father, who was a beautiful man, I love him very deeply, uh, was, an, was he called himself agnostic, but he was more atheistic when I grew up. Whenever the concept of a deity or any spiritual concepts beyond rational perception, that's what atheism is a belief that anything outside of rational objective reality is not only not real, but idiotic and a nuisance to any conception of truth. So that's problematic. So when I grew up with a father like that, my dad was God to me. Like any kids is, dad equals God. Your dad is the window to which you perceive the world. And if that window is God isn't real and all spirituality is uh, stupid, then you end up internalizing that. So I internalize the belief that God isn't real. Not only is God not real, but if God is real, he's a lunatic and a psychopath. And that basically built my brain perceiving the world that way. Um, so that's where my conscious, my, my brain began. My brain began believing those things. Um, and I also witnessed my mother being gaslighted about her spirituality whenever she would bring forward new concepts of Buddhism or um uh, any discussion of anything beyond rational perception, 
um, she was very intuitive and psychic, but she, I saw the suffering she, she felt when she would present those arguments and my dad would basically be like, you're stupid. And all up to my dad, you know, he's very different now, but you know, he was young, young and dumb in that way. And I was young and dumb in many ways too. And but seeing him, seeing my God, my father, deny my mother's spirituality and label as stupid and it causing many arguments between them, I then associated spirituality with pissing off smart people and causing conflict. So I just, that led me to then reject it in my own mind and not even perceive it, perceive it as a possibility because it led to destruction. So I believe spirituality equals stupid and leads to conflict. So I didn't even go there myself. And then anytime I present an argument to my father that was rooted in atheism, I was rewarded. So it's like, okay, spirituality equals no love. Atheism equals love. So that my brain was molded that way. So that sets the stage for my consciousness. Now let's move towards my actual childhood struggles. Um, and why this is important is because I'm going to later convey how atheism only exacerbated the struggles in the future. Didn't help. They didn't help them at all. So... My struggles in childhood were, were, were mainly around um, the way I thought about myself, like all kids, right? Um, I didn't feel loved because I didn't I didn't get the attention I felt I deserved from, as, from my parents as a kid. They were good parents, but I think no matter what they did, the trauma that was left was me not feeling like I was enough. So I subjectively interpreted, interpreted their actions as not enough. So even if I don't believe they did wrong, I felt wronged. <laughs> so that's one thing about childhood trauma is that even if your parents didn't, didn't do anything that wrong, you still got fucked up. So it's okay to be feel your trauma and feel like you're you were, you were you were traumatized, but also not feel like your parents were the devil. Those those things can exist at the same time. So that okay, I felt like I wasn't enough, and then that didn't help. Was my life in school didn't help with that because. I had learning disabilities. I basically was the worst student in my class until I was about 16. Um, I was put in like the stupid kids. Any, any like, there's like groups of like classes in, in school. Um, I went to private school, so it wasn't like a, all in one classroom. It was like different. There's like four or five different levels of classrooms. I was always in the worst one uh, until I was 16. So that made me feel, okay, I'm stupid. Boom. So the first belief I, let, I felt about myself, I am stupid because I get bad results in tests and I am in the dumbest classes. And I have learning disabilities. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Uh, self-limiting belief one. I, I had severe eczema as a kid, uh, which means I had like scabs and blood everywhere all the time as a kid. And uh, I also was overweight. Um, you know, people will look at me as a kid and be like, oh, he was just cute. And I felt, uh, if you thought, I felt fat. I felt not loved. I felt stupid. So no matter what people may perceive as truth, I felt those things. So again, that's what's tricky about trauma is that you can feel a certain way, but reality can show it differently. That's what trauma is. Trauma is literally objective reality is not matching my subjective analysis because my subjective analysis is rooted in not feeling like enough. And you gaslight yourself being like, how can I be traumatized if I am actually enough? But you're still traumatized and it's important to heal in that. So then that led to the belief, I am ugly. I'm not worthy of, of admiration from women and friends because I'm ugly and I'm stupid. I'm ugly, I'm stupid. Boom, boom. Two self-limiting beliefs. Um... And that led me to feel like I didn't fit in at all until I was about 19. Um, so until I was about 19, I felt like I was stupid fat and didn't fit in. And that so that is in addition to me not believing, believing in God. That's the contextualization of my brain. Um, the next chapter in this a atheistic evolution is what I call the ascent. When I was 16, and all me yapping about my own childhood would, will eventually add up something, I, I promise, so bear with me. Um, when I was 16, uh, a switch flipped. I, I think it was a pre-programmed um, switch that was destined to be that way. Because all of a sudden, I went from being the worst student to one of, to, to you know doing incredibly well. Um, I was a terrible athlete, and I, I became the starting shooting, uh, shooting guard of my varsity basketball team. Um, I started getting female attention because I started looking good and that was 16. I was like, Whoa, so you're telling me if I do well on a test, if I get the pretty girl, if I score the baskets in a basketball game, I'm finally enough. Wow. Oh my God. Amazing. So of course that became a North star, which if you root down doing well in tests, doing well in sports and getting girls, 
my North Star became accumulating power through intellectual capabilities, right? Because even getting girls is, is a game because I was attractive. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So it's like my North Star became power and using that power through lust and intelligence. So then we shift to college and this is where things get really fucking juicy. Um, but before I go there, let me finish this, this, this loop. Sorry for the, you know, zigzag <laughs> route here. Um, when your North Star's power accumulated through your intellectual capabilities and lustful tendencies, that becomes God, right? So regardless if you believe in God or not, your highest value becomes the rubric and lens you treat life with. So if that isn't a deity who loves you, it's power, it's lust, it's intelligence. And that became my North Star. My North Star was power, lust, and intelligence. So everything I did in life was mediated through the lens of I want power, right? So when you don't believe in God, your God becomes power. Unless you're a, a super enlightened atheistic individual who is a loving being, then sure. But most people who don't believe in God, the North Star becomes how can I use every situation to accumulate power, right? And that was me. Because I didn't believe in God, my God became a highest value, which because of my trauma, my insecurity was how can I accumulate as much power as possible? And if you were, this is also interesting because many Christians and Catholics and, and Muslim people believe in God. I believe in God. But they don't actually believe in God because their highest value is power. And when your highest value is power, you can't believe in God because if everything you, you see life through is how can I get power, you're denying the power of the Most High. And that's why I think it's important in addition to, in addition to believing in God to develop a value of the highest order in your, in your hierarchy because your psyche, your psyche operates outside of God in, to some extent, right? Because you can believe in God, but your, God, your highest value becomes power and your psyche is oriented towards finding power. So your psyche's value system has to reflect divinity. So I believe that one's value should be truth, should be love. One of the, one of the two. Because then your psyche is moving towards something. Because you believe in God, but you just believe truth is, truth is the highest value. And when truth is, truth is the highest value, you mediate reality through what is true, right? So moving forward now with that perspective. Um, my North Star was that of power, and that's a demonic North Star. So let me show you how that, why that North Star is demonic. Every situation in my life from when I got into college, I got I went to Brown University, which is a super prestigious elite Ivy League college. And that was a crack to me. Is who? I'm around all these super smart, fancy people. How can I be smarter and better than them in already a super elite area? So I had to get really creative how to do that. So I basically got there and I ended up gaming the system to do well in school. So I wasn't even learning. I was just like manipulating people to do well in school. I was, you know, cheating off people and doing all this. this not cheating. I was gaming the system um, to get as good, good of grades as possible to then feel powerful in myself, to then convey the energy to others and the fact that I am smart. And if I am smart, you cannot judge me. You cannot hate me. You cannot dismiss me. So my intelligence is now my means to become worthy, right? That was step one. And then step two was the social hierarchy, right? In this college, there was specific fraternities that if you got into, you became cool. And if you're an attractive guy like me, you then could use that power to then get women. So when I first was a freshman in this college, I looked the same way I look now, but I got no girls. The, I was getting like the mid-tier girls. And I, that sounds egoistic as hell, but I'm, I'm just speaking from that consciousness I was back in, in back then. I didn't want that. I wanted to get the hottest girls. I wanted to have all of them running after me. So I basically realized that for me to get all the girls I want, I have to accumulate the most status because that's the way life works with a woman. Thankfully, I realized that. And that's a dem demonic way to get girls, but that's the way, I, the way I thought was to get girls. And it worked. So let me explain how. I realized that if I date the hottest girl, all of them will get come after me. So my lens was like, how can I manipulate a super hot girl to like me so that I can like break up with her to then get all these women? And I did that. And I got into a super good frat. And then I was like, holy shit, now I can get any girl I want. I have all the friends I want. 
And I basically manipulated people to get the power status I wanted to feel worthy, right? Because now because I'm so powerful and now because I have all these women who want me, now because I'm doing well in school, you can't possibly not love me. So power became the North Star I used to manipulate people to get into a social position where I felt worthy of love. That is a consequence of atheism. Me manipulating people to become powerful, to then use that power to manipulate more, to accumulate more power, to finally fill the void of feeling like I'm not worthy of love was a consequence of being an atheist because I don't, I didn't believe in God. And because I didn't believe in God, I believed in power. I believe power was the way to find divinity unconsciously. So that's the danger of atheism. The danger of atheism isn't not being religious per se. It's ending up ending up believing that power is your north star so and to further go down that path i ended up becoming a drug addict from that experience and that's the darkest night of my soul i was addicted to pharmaceuticals uh clonopin adderall i smoked about half an ounce of weed of alcohol uh, half an ounce of weed a week I would go to a party with literal a fucking full handle of whiskey on pharmaceuticals on weed and drink the whole handle one night like two or three times a week. And I also believe that addiction was a consequence of the atheism. So and let me explain why. I realized the North Star of power and, and wanting power took me to hell. Literally. Hell is a... Co- why I believe atheism leads you to hell is because when you're atheist... Again, when you're atheist... You believe power is the way through because your North Star isn't God, it's power. And when you follow the North Star of power, you end up enhancing and inflating your ego to the highest extent, which makes you miserable. And misery is hell. So atheism leads you to hell because power, following power leads you to hell. And in that position, I realized, what the fuck am I doing here? Literally, what the fuck am I doing here? I have anyone I want. I have all the good grades. I'm the top dog at alpha dog at the frat. I feel fucking horrible. I feel fucking horrible. And I realized that insecurity was driving my power. And thank you, therapy. I was still an atheist, but I became rational in my understanding of my my drive for power and and, and womanizing and doing well was that I didn't feel like I was enough. And I knew that me figuring out why I wasn't enough and how to heal that and healing that, I had to drop everything. I had to drop the woman. I had to drop the power. I had to drop the, the, the school. I had to go within for a couple of years to clear that 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 demonic ick in my heart. I didn't want to do that at all. So I basically took drugs to numb that moral push to do that. Right? I, I do believe addiction is an atheistic issue because to me, addiction is a consequence of finding spiritual enlightenment unconsciously, trying to find it in all the wrong places, right? Woman, power, your job. And you have to take drugs to fill the, to, to basically, your mind is like, hey, motherfucker, your salvation is never going to be found in power, lust, and intellectual capacities. Your salvation is going to be found in going into your heart and following your path of being a service. And we take drugs because we morally know that's the way, but we use drugs as a way to procrastinate and convince ourselves that that way is the, is the way, right? Because I'm high, because I'm on Adderall all the time, I now have to believe that being intellectually capable and pow- being dominant is the way forward. So drugs were numbing the pain that was attempting to push me out of the box of atheism, right? Because once I be- once you believe in something outside of you, outside your ego, the ego loses control. And the ego's way from me is power, 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 power. And the, the drugs enhance that egoistic inclination towards wanting power. Once that broke and you find divinity, the ego has no control. So my addiction was a consequence of me following power, me my intuition knowing that way wasn't the way, and me taking drugs to block the pain of my intuition, right? Drug addiction is what happens, any addiction is what happens when we have to block the intuition that's driving us to find a path of highest good, right? We're procrastinating, we're procrastinating our journey towards finding the path towards the highest good through addiction. That addiction is keeping us is keeping us in the box of not following that. The way we break addiction is by basically being like, nope, I'm not doing that, and following the path towards the highest good. 
But you can't follow the path towards the highest good when you're atheistic and your path towards the highest good, the North Star, is power. Not working that way. So, I eventually had to wake the fuck up. And that waking the fuck up was caused by my inclination to want to kill myself. I delivered that pretty strangely, but um, it was COVID. I was living in, in Hawaii in, with my mom. And I couldn't be fucking smoking 10 J's a day and, and, and shoving Adderall down my throat and, you know, going crazy with my mom. My mom was a beautiful reflection towards me through her sympathy, through me seeing like, yo, what the hell are you doing with your life? So that motivated me to become clean. And once I got clean, I had nothing to hide behind, right? I think why being why getting sober from addiction is so difficult is you begin to remove the, the things that were helping you hide behind your pain. The pain is now there. Sobriety is you having nothing to numb your pain. And why I recommend sobriety for those in the path is that the only way forward is through feeling the pain. And you can only feel the pain if you allow the pain to come through. And you, you can only allow the pain to come through if you don't block it. And things that block it are addiction. So I got clean. In that, in that cleanness, I found clarity. Sobriety, became, sobriety creates clarity because in sobriety, there's nothing to hide behind. And in that, facing my pain, I got suicidal as fuck. Literally, when I was detoxing for a week straight, every single thought I had was to kill myself. And thank fucking God, thank God, literally thank God, I knew that wasn't the answer. God showed me in that, I, I woke up. God showed me in that instance. When I was suicidal, God showed me that I wasn't suicidal. My ego was suicidal. My ego had to die for me to find the light. And once I realized that, I began to notice, wow, my identity is a complete illusion. And that is when my spiritual journey opened. When I realized that who I was was an illusion. My desire for power and to dominate and to conquest was an illusion. My need for attention, admiration, validation was an illusion. My belief that I was broken was an illusion. And if my ego is an illusion, then what's real? If my concept of self, my ability to rationally perceive the world is an illusion, what exists beyond the illusion? So why I think being suicidal is most people's spiritual path is that you begin, begin to awaken behind what's behind the veil. You can only see the truth behind objective reality, which is spirituality, once you realize that you are not even real. So an ego death is the prerequisite towards finding the light because you have to realize that you are not even real. And once the ego is not real, what is real? When I was an atheist, the only thing that was real was my ego. Because the ego is what helps you perceive what is real in an objective lens. Once I realized my ego was not real, I had to ask the question, what was real? When I asked the question, hey, what's real? I was shown what's real. I heard voices. I saw lights. I saw blobs. I saw dark blobs. I was given all this information. I was seeing fucking God knows what. That didn't open the door, right? From that moment forward, I was like, Fuck atheism, that shit is the furthest thing from truth. And me, further than that, even if you don't want to believe atheism is not, it, it isn't the truth, it led me to hell. Literally. Atheism led me to following power, hurting people, becoming a drug, drug addict, and wanting to kill myself, right? Atheism equals a path towards wanting to kill myself because wanting to kill yourself is the only way you can find the truth that I am not even real. My identity isn't real. I'm not recommending don't fucking ever think about that shit ever. But we often find that point in our path because we have to realize we're not real. And this led to a, a, a realization like, okay, what is my North Star? I don't want power. I don't want to manipulate people. What the hell is my North Star? That North Star became truth and service because what led to that discovery is I wrote an article about my experience with addiction and why I was an addict and what I went through in school and how I became that addicted person. I was met with more love than I ever received. And therefore, I made the connection that 
if I tell the truth, and telling the truth is literally being authentic, if I'm authentic, not only do I receive more love, I can actually feel the love, right? You can't feel love if you show yourself through a mask. You can feel love if you show yourself through the real you. So my North Star is now truth and authenticity because it is the medium to which you actually receive love. You can't receive love through deception. You can receive love through telling the truth and showing yourself. So my North Star now is authenticity and truth because being authentic and telling the truth is how you can actually feel love because you can't feel love through manipulation. You feel wrong, okay? So, and in combination with that is is I felt the weight of being of service in the sense I felt alive for the first time ever. I felt alive at 22, 21 because I was of service. In that service, my heart began opening and in that opening of my heart, I found spirituality. So now we're at the point on the path where I have officially moved towards spirituality from atheism. So I'm going to begin with discussing what actually worked about my spiritual path and what didn't. And to present, present you a topic sentence on what actually worked, I began spirituality on the old sage spiritual path recommended to me by my, by my healer at the time that actually fucking worked deeply. And then, of course, my narcissistic, egoistic, controlling tendencies took over with the guise of spirituality, the mask of it, and led me down the new age path, which almost brought me back to my original, my old, not original, my older self, which needed control and wanted to hurt others. So let's begin with what actually worked initially with spirituality. Spirituality helped me connect with what existed, existed beyond myself. So when I was atheistic, I only could connect to what I felt was connected to me and what served me my egoistic tendencies. Spirituality opened me to the reality of there's a whole life outside of me. And that life outside of me is more real than the life inside me. Because life inside me, my my subjective interpretation is an illusion. So I led my life always trying to connect to what's outside of me, to be of service in that way, to, to be with the divine being with God, if you root it down, is connecting to what's outside your ego. God equals life outside my ego. And being spiritual is devoting yourself to living a life outside of you and being of service to the energy outside of you, which you cannot if you're atheistic. So that's the first thing that opened the door for me is like feeling an energy outside of me and devoting myself to the energy outside of me, even though I didn't really know what the energy was at the time. The second thing that really helped me in becoming spiritual was I refused to be gaslighted. Really strong spiritual people are so because they refuse to gas be gaslit into not being spiritual. If you're at a dinner party or your parents or with anyone and they're like, what you're saying is crazy, you know, your higher self isn't real, your guides aren't real, me in the past would have been like, maybe you're right. I'm going to shut that voice down. Fuck that. Depression will fly at you as a spiritual person if you allow yourself to get gaslit into not being believing your spirituality. Next time someone tells you, hey, what you're believing is fucking fairy tale nonsense. Fuck you. Fuck you. I'm not, I'm not hearing you. I'm not believing you. I know my spirituality is real. You will not gaslight me into believing that the only thing that's real is my ego. Fuck you. Even though fuck you is the least spiritual thing to say in this instance, it's the most spiritual thing actually because the people who gaslight your spirituality are the ones who will destroy you. Fuck you. Fuck you to anyone who tempts to tell me that my spirituality is stupid and not real. I'm not playing that game. That game got me nowhere, got me into literal hell where I hated myself and I wanted to kill myself. I will not be gaslit about my spirituality. Fuck you. That's what spirituality got me initially is... Once I felt that the weight of spirituality, how beautiful it was, I realized nothing can take this away from me. I refuse. I refuse to be my mother, who's, who's, who, who my, my father told her spirituality was nonsense. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse because I know it got me in a hell. So that component of spirituality really helped me in being like, this is real. 
Devoting myself to life outside of me is real. I'm not doing this shit. I'm not being gaslit. It also helped me develop an unshakable belief that I am not my ego. And the only way you can really live a good life in your heart is to believe you're not the ego. So being spiritual helped me initially believe, no, I'm not the ego. So, and when you believe you're not the ego, you realize you you exist beyond thought. The only thing that's real is the belief that I am. I am, that's it. So, in combination, the initial steps of spirituality that helped me were being in an open heart, devoting myself to the to the divine, which is life outside of me, and not being gaslit to not accept my spirituality, and also knowing that I'm not the ego. Those things are incredibly useful. Don't get don't get gaslit. Don't believe you're your ego. Devote yourself to service. Those components of spirituality. Amazing. Great. S tier spirituality. You're not the ego. Live life outside your ego. Live in your heart. And don't get, don't get gaslit by your spirituality. Beautiful. And now we enter the dark road. The road of hell. I have narcissistic tendencies. I have, I'm a severe control freak. In my past, I would basically, anytime any person was a threat towards my safety, I would try to control them to do something that led to my emotional safety. And that's any narcissistic tendencies at the core. A narcissist wants to control you to make themselves feel emotionally safe, even if that's not your consequence. So I realized that unconsciously, New Age spirituality is a vehicle for one to exacerbate their need for control, which is literally the antithesis of spirituality. Spirituality should mean I give over my control to the divine. What new age spirituality has become to mean is I am not using these practices to control everything to match my own egoistic desires, right? So let's begin the manifestation. Manifestation is literally just control manipulation. I want to control and manipulate my reality to fit what I want and need. So you're telling me your spiritual devotion is to believe that your egoistic desires and needs are so damn important that you should manipulate reality as it is to fit your own egoistic tiny desire that may make you fall into hell. That is narcissistic inclination. You do not know what's best for you. God does. Manifestation fools you to believe that not only do you know what's best for you, you can control God's reality to fit what's best for you. So, behind that little innocent little manifestation practice at night, saying, I will make sure every single reality matches my way. I am the creator. I am going to make everything go my way. What is in that? I want to control reality to fit my own emotional needs because I believe life isn't enough at the moment. I need to control reality to make it the way I want it. That is narcissism. Literally, when I was doing that, it, it further entrenched my belief that I am in control, right? I am in control equals ego. Manifestation is I believe I am in control. If you believe you're in control, who's not in control? God. So manifestation is basically a covert atheistic practice because it's denying the power of God. Let me explain why. Yes, the law of attraction is real. Yes, you can manifest things. Because God, we have free will. And in free will is in within free will in this dimension is the fact that you can attract things your way through thinking them and, be, and believing them. But I've met many people who've manifested all they wanted and they're fucking miserable. They're literally miserable because it, it, didn't, it didn't come from God, it came from their ego, right? And they actually manifested it to show themselves that what they did for themselves was creating misery. So If things were to always go my way, I'd be always be suffering because I don't know what's best for me, right? But manifestation fools us to believe that we know what's best for us. Let's, exp let's explore that a little bit. When we manifest, we're using God as a word to just get what we want. God becomes the genie of our own egoistic desires. God, please give me a million dollars. God, please give me that beautiful woman. God, please give me a million followers. 
God becomes a genie to fulfill our egoistic wishes. That's not what God's here to do. God is here to love you. Exactly where you are. Again, God is here to love you exactly where you are. Feel that. The opposite of that is manifestation. Using God to fulfill your need to believe in a reality that you believe is making you feel more worthy and worthwhile than it is now. So when you're a manifester and you're always manifesting, I want this, I want that, you're using God as a genie to manifest your egoistic desires, right? So you're telling God, God, I know better than you. Please, get, because I know better than you, you should listen to me and give me what I want. That's fucking demonic. That's satanic. God, I know better than you. Give me what I want right now. Satanic. Okay. Returning to my old story, me manifesting every day led to me becoming more controlling and narcissistic in myself because I now believe that anytime reality didn't match my manifestations, I was not lovable, I was wrong, I was unworthy. And that's a that's an exter externalization of, a, of one's self-worth, right? I was beginning to feel the same exact pain I did before addiction. And I felt that call to move towards a behaviors that would numb myself again, which is not fucking good at all for me in my history. So... I became basically a narcissistic control freak, freak again through new age practices. And that's not fun. I was, I basically felt almost as bad as it did when I was atheistic. And now we arrive to that point of the story where I say, I found Jesus and everything was amazing. I'm not that cliche motherfucker. <laughs> um, so let's tell the story as to what actually happened when I found Jesus. Jesus. I finally accepted that I was lost. I finally accepted that me following all these new age manifestation practices led me to be feel lost and I hated my life because I wasn't getting what I wanted and I believed if I wasn't getting what I wanted, I was miserable. I was like, I'm fucking miserable. It's like, either am I miserable or am I doing something wrong? And I asked God to help me. I said, God, please show me the way. That is the most powerful prayer you can possibly say, right? Manifestation is the opposite of that prayer. God, I know the way, match my way. What the fuck is that? But God, please show me the way is humble. It's saying, I don't know what's best for me. I give you the reins. Please show me the way. That's the only prayer that should exist. Because you're actually praying. You're saying, God, I don't know. I'm lost. Help me. Show me the way. New age manifestation is, I know the way. I got this. Peace. That's the same as atheism. That prayer saved my life. Twice. When I was an atheist, moving, toward, moving away from addiction. And when I was a new age spiritual narcissist, manifesting everything all the time. The prayer, God, please show me the way, save me. The minute I said that prayer, Jesus kept coming in my dreams. I kept finding, you know, books fell on my lap of the way of Jesus. My, I met two of my best friends now who are, you know, followers of the way. Not the Christian way, the Jesus way. And that all fell on my lap the minute I said that. I mean, in the next day, I was at night, you know, saying, God, please show me the way. And, you know, one of my toxic habits is I'll watch YouTube before I sleep. And I was watching a literal, you know, it's off brand for me. I was watching a, you know, video game. I like playing replay. And out of nowhere, when I said, God, show me the way, the video, the fucking video game played. Jesus came on the screen and say the whole and said, the Holy Spirit is with you. So when I said, God, please show me the way I need help from from New Age spirituality a random RPG shooter game, Jesus came on the screen and said, let the Holy Spirit be with you. Then I was like, all right. I, this is, I can't say no to this. I can't. And I think what stopped me is, because so my, my, many of my friends before were spiritual, when I was in a spiritual box, I thought that Christianity was a scam. I was like, oh, Jesus can't fucking help me. What the fuck is all this bullshit? And that's the issue with modern-day Christianity is modern-day Christianity is a scam. And that's so horribly painful because Jesus is the most powerful 
entity and energy in the world. And I didn't believe it because I, because I knew Christianity was a scam. So I had to thankfully do my own research. And I researched Christ both from an actual historical standpoint of understanding who was Jesus, what were his actual teachings before they got corrupted and inverted from the, from the Bible. So I read, you know, the Seeing Gospel piece. I read many things. I watched many lectures. I listened to my best my, my best friend, Aaron Apke, who teaches this stuff. And I also knew that Christ in and of itself, because the Bible is the most popular mythology ever. And if the Bible is the most popular mythology ever, the most powerful archetypes in our collective consciousness exist in that book. So I had to also follow the archetypal reality of Jesus. So that led me to find and develop the belief that I believe Jesus is the way. I believe Jesus is the way. And I'll tell you why through my research I did. So first, let's start with a with an archetypal reality. Okay? So an archetype in Jungian psychology basically means there is an energy field in the logo slash the collective unconscious that if anyone orients himself well enough with can tap into the energy field and become the archetype. So, you know, if you look at someone like, this is a morbid example, but someone like Heath Ledger and the Joker, he became that role so well because part of him became the arch- archetype of the Joker. And in that archetype, he got depressed and killed himself. So there's a danger here that you can actually embody the, ar- the archetype you seek, which is an energy field in the collective unconscious. But to embody the archetype, you have to understand what the archetype is. So what is the archetype of Jesus? There's multiple components to this. So the first part is Christ consciousness, the archetype of Christ, is the willful acceptance of our fate with an open heart and open arms, no matter how bad our ego may perceive that fate to be. Jesus walked with an open heart towards his own crucifixion. Imagine being Jesus, being like, man, I'm about to get crucified for literal nonsense in the most horrific way you can imagine. But because I trust God and I trust my fate, I'm not only going to walk towards that, I'm going to accept it as the path towards the highest good. So the most consequential evil his ego could imagine in the moment that could perceive this is the fucking worst thing possible literally led mythologically to that exchange being what saves everyone from their sins. So the worst possible exit out of life for Jesus ended up becoming the most powerful energy for everyone to tap into in the world. So that archetype mythologically means that if I accept my fate and walk towards it, no matter how bad that fate may be, I create not only the most light in myself and my spirit, but the most light in other people. That's the archetype, right? So that leads me to the archetype. So in the archetype of Christ, what faith really means is that you surrender to your suffering as divine, right? Your suffering is divine. Faith is easy when things are going your way, but faith really means that when I'm suffering, when things aren't going my way, I have to understand that there is no my way, and the suffering is actually sent from God in a way to develop me in the best way possible. And not only is it the most conducive adversary energy suffering is to find my highest good, Faith is also the belief that no matter how bad life can get, I will create the most possible meaning for my suffering. So faith, according to Christ, is I believe my suffering is divine. I believe my my surrender to my suffering is the only way possible because the suffering is divine. And because And because I have to surrender to my suffering, I have to create meaning for my suffering to lead to my development in the best way possible. So, let's summarize that. If you follow the archetype of Christ, you believe that your faith is a reflection of you walking open arms towards anything that comes your way. Even if that 
thing that comes your way is the worst thing you could imagine. Because enduring that worst thing you could imagine with an open heart will lead to the Holy Spirit residing in you to the highest direction. So if we reduce that down to like psychological, rationalistic beliefs, can you honestly, logically tell me that you accepting reality as it is, welcoming it, facing it, and moving forward with it, creating meaning from it that creates a foundation in you that is unshakable, can you possibly tell me that's not the best way to handle your pain? Find any literature that shows me, scientific literature that shows me the way forward isn't in acceptance. There's, there's no other way. But in this archetypal reality of Christ is the reality that you have to destroy your ego. Right? The ego is designed to control your reality and emotionally soothe constantly to not face your pain. So the ego wants to do whatever it can to not face emotional chaos. Because it knows that the emotional the answer to the emotional chaos is in facing the chaos, willfully accepting it and moving forward. New Age spiritual practices allow you to put your ego back in the forefront. Because you believe that I can dictate reality the way I want because I think I know what's best. So if something's not going my way, I can sit down and manifest and say, I will now visualize my life going the way I want it to go because that way I want it to go is the right way to go. That's not possible when you follow Christ. Because if you follow Christ, you know that whatever reality, reality is God, is presenting me, that's the way God wants it to be for me. And I have to use that information to cultivate myself and build myself in a path forward with the information. So the ego hates Christ. New Age spirituality hates Christ because what Christ means is the willful acceptance of my fate, no matter how ugly that fate is, and realizing not only can I not control my fate, me trying to control my fate is the worst possible path forward because it is not a path forward, it's only a path backwards. So the biggest antidote to narcissism is Christianity, is, is, or not Christianity, is Christ. Because what fallen Christ means is I accept my fate. I don't want to control it. I don't want to dictate it. I accept my fate. It's hard. It's really hard. It's brutal. Right? Surrendering control is literally killing the ego. And you can't kill the ego if you're manifesting shit all the time. You're literally enhancing your ego. So I used to be a big manifester. I would try and control everything and dictate my reality the way I wanted it to. But I became a control freak. I became miserable. I couldn't face my own suffering. Once I accepted Christ's archetype as the way forward, I began facing my reality. I began accepting my reality as the only way forward and the best way forward. And that's been freeing. It's really freeing. It's freeing when you not only see reality as God's intervention, but as the best way forward to find your highest self. Manifestation is the, the denial of reality to suit your own egoistic needs. Christ consciousness is the acceptance of reality to fulfill yourself and advance yourself in the highest way possible. So, if the word Christ triggers you, I get it. If you could take one message from this podcast I can give you, it's... The only way you can find your higher self and the best version of you is to accept reality as it is, love it, and not only love it, but understand it's, it's divine intervention to lead you towards your highest good. So here's where I am. Atheism led me to misery, depression, wanting to kill myself, and falling power and de a demonic lust at all times. That then moved me towards spirituality, which initially helped me in the lens of being of service to others and devoting myself to a consciousness outside of my ego, but then destroyed me once I believed that, that, that I could use spirituality as a way to enhance my narcissistic tendencies to allow my need for control to dictate my reality. That led me to depression again. 
Now, the way forward for me is Christ consciousness because Christ consciousness is the only spiritual practice that enables you to use the present moment and reality as the compass forward, not denying it. So, you can say, that's just Buddhism, right? Buddhism is just the, the acceptance of reality, and it is. But what Christ takes it a step further is that not only is the acceptance of reality the way forward, but knowing that reality as it gives as it presents myself to me is God's path forward for me. That suffering not only is the way, but it's actually God's way for me to find my highest good. And because it's the truth, I have to open my heart, become the Christ within, and follow that path. So I hope that helped. I covered a lot there. My brain kind of sort of slowing down a bit towards the end, so I hope that I was making sense there. Um, comment any questions you have, I'll answer them. And I want to close with, I'm not saying that you should deny spirituality, right? I still believe in karma. I still believe in a higher self. I still believe in chakras. I still know the law of attraction is real. But my focus is on Christ consciousness because my focus is on also on reality as it comes to me as a way forward. And that's been useful for me because pain arrives when we believe our reality should be the way it is. And manifestation is literally, I don't believe my reality is the way it should be, so I have to change it. So you're going to suffer all the time until that manifestation comes true. And then that ma manifestation comes true, but your own mental wiring want, will make you believe that that's not actually the way and you have to manifest again. Christ's way is that way that reality as it is is the way. That's the, that's that's the answer. If you believe that what life gives you is the way forward, you can never be miserable because you're always aligned with what's real. You're never in denial. Okay, so whatever words you want to choose, the only path forward is to see reality as it is and use that as a mechanism to actually move forward. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to watch more content, please click this video right here and don't forget to subscribe right here. Thank you.